Today I will be presenting the paper, Variational Inference with Parameter Learning, Applied to Vehicle Trajectory Estimation for IROS 2020. Let's start by unpacking some of the key terms in our title. Specifically, we'll first look at what variational inference is, and some of its benefits, before moving on to discussing how we can wrap parameter learning into the single framework. Before even going into variational inference, I want to talk about one popular technique for batch state estimation in robotics, maxima a posteriori estimation, or MAP. This approach finds the most likely state given the prior and the data, or in other words, it finds the mode of the posterior distribution. The limitations of this approach is that we lose important information about the distribution, a key aspect if we wish to then fuse the state estimate in a probabilistic framework, or if we simply want to judge how confident we are in our state estimate. In the figure below, we show two posterior distributions, one that is Gaussian and another that is non-Gaussian. The MAP approach would return just the mode of the distribution. We typically use the Laplace approximation, that is we take the most likely state as the mean and take the Hessian of the objective function as the posterior inverse covariance. This, however, is done in a post hoc manner. For linear models, this turns out to be the exact Gaussian posterior. However, for nonlinear problems or non-Gaussian problems, the posterior distribution is non-Gaussian. In this case, the mode and the mean of the posterior will differ and the Laplace approximation is no longer exact. In variational inference, we instead choose a distribution Q from an approximation family, and then find the Q that best fits the full Bayesian posterior by minimizing the KL divergence between the two. We choose to do Gaussian variational inference. That is, we choose Q, the approximation of the posterior distribution, to be a Gaussian. Thus, with the setup, we directly optimize for both the best mean and the covariance. One limitation is that variational inference is not tractable for large problems with a large state size, and that is why in robotics we usually resort to MAP. A previous paper by Barfoot et al. showed how to exploit sparsity to make the problem more tractable. Summarizing the paper here, they rewrite the KL divergence, dropping constant terms, as a falling loss function, which can be optimized by applying an iterative update scheme for both the mean and the covariance. The tractability of this method relies on the fact that the joint log likelihood factors. Because of this, we never need to compute the expectations over a full Gaussian Q, only at the factor marginals QK. These expectations can be approximated using Gaussian cubature samples of the marginal posterior. We also note that approximating the expectations at only the mean is equivalent to the MAP Gauss-Newton optimization. The ideas from this paper are foundational to what we will be presenting in this video. Now that we've talked about variational inference, let's move on to parameter learning. First of all, why do we care about parameter learning? Even with great state estimation tools, including ESGVI, there are often robot parameters that affect the quality of the estimation. These can be difficult to determine from first principles, and they vary with each new platform and sensor. Hand tuning them can take a lot of time if there are many unknown parameters. Our goal is to eventually be able to develop a learning framework that allows for the deployment of a robot with arbitrary sensors on board and have it learn the robot model parameters required for estimation from solely the sensor data, that is, without a ground truth system. This is because for many practical problems, it is difficult or prohibitively expensive to set up a system for collecting this ground truth data. What we present here today is just a small step in that direction, as we will focus on learning robot noise models. This is still a very practical application for many state estimation problems. In the domain of parameter learning, the most common approach is to find parameters that maximize the likelihood of the data. This becomes a difficult problem to solve when the model depends on missing or unobserved variables. In this case, an indirect approach can be taken by introducing a latent state to the problem, which can be estimated alongside of the parameters. This is known as expectation maximization, an iterative algorithm that alternates between optimizing for a distribution over the latent state and the parameters. EM has been used for parameter learning to learn the parameters of a linear system. It has also been used for parameter learning for nonlinear systems, but there's some different approximations taken to make the problem tractable. The most similar work to ours is from Kokala et al., Shona et al., and Gasparin and Jurisic. But all these methods only apply to smoothing problems, where the inverse covariance has a specific block tridiagonal form. We use ESGVI, which is a general method. This enables us to do parameter learning for problems like SLAM when the factorization of the joint likelihood has cycles. In addition, the above methods were only tested on simple problems and simulations. Now I will talk about how we can combine ESGVI and EM to do parameter learning. 
we start by applying the usual EM decomposition to our loss function, where Q is the Gaussian distribution approximating our posterior. The second term is the upper bound, also known as the negative evidence lower bound, or elbow. In both the E step and the M step, we optimize the negative elbow, which you can rewrite as the following loss functional. This is the same loss that we are optimizing in ESGVI. Thus, using ESGVI as our inference engine, we can easily fold in parameter learning with EM, as the E step is already accomplished by ESGVI. In the M step, we find parameters that minimize our loss. We can set the derivative with respect to our parameters equal to zero and directly solve for the best parameters on the recurrent distribution of Q where possible or use the gradient for a partial M step. The main contribution of this work is wrapping parameter learning into the ESGVI framework to solve a practical problem. We show how to learn motion and observation noise models without any ground truth. These noise models are often assumed to be either known or tuned by trial and error. In our previous work, we showed that we can learn noise models for vehicle motion priors, but we required accurate and complete ground truth, that is observations of the complete latent state. We also achieve outlier rejection in a variational setting by placing an inverse Wishart prior over measurement covariances, whose parameters we also learn. I'll talk more in detail about this later. The problem that we wish to tackle is learning motion and observation noise models for localization of a vehicle against a high definition map. Our vehicle is equipped with a Velodyne 128 LiDAR and an Aplanix Pause LV positioning system for ground truth. In our problem setup, we have a unknown latent trajectory. We place a white noise on a solution prior on the latent trajectory with an unknown power spectral density matrix. We also have a known observation model, but with unknown covariances. Because the quality of measurements can depend on many factors, instead of learning a static measurement covariance as a parameter, we include time-varying measurement covariances as part of our state to be estimated and place an inverse Wishart prior on it. We then estimate some of the parameters of the inverse Wishart prior. We now visualize the unknown components of our problem and their relationship using a factor graph representation. The latent states we wish to estimate in our E-step are the trajectory and the time-varying covariance of the LiDAR localization pose measurements. These are represented as the big white circles in our factor graph. Factors relate one or more states to each other or to a measurement. These are represented as the small black dots and are dependent on the parameter values we learn in the M step. If we have ground truth available for a learning procedure, we can simply include it as an additional factor as shown in the dotted rectangle and learned its covariance. We use the data set we collected from a previous work which consists of two routes. On route A, we use the collected sensor data for learning all our unknown parameters using ESGVI and EM. Route B is our test route, which we will use to test LiDAR localization, holding our learned parameters fixed and estimating our unknown state. The procedure we take to obtain our measurements used for parameter learning is as follows. We drive along route A1 using the data collected to create a LiDAR map of the area using a tool from Aplanix Corporation the provider of a pause ground truth system. On the second run of the same route, we collect LiDAR data and ground truth. We use the LiDAR data to localize against the map created from 1.1 using a LiDAR localization pipeline from Aplanix. This pipeline produces pose measurements. Therefore, we have two sources of vehicle pose measurements, one from the pause LV, which we treat as ground truth, and another from the Aplanix LiDAR localization system. These measurements can then be used for parameter learning. We'll be doing three experiments with this data set. For experiment A, we learn parameters with the ground truth as an additional factor for comparison sake, but then remove it, as our parameter learning methods should work without ground truth. All future experiments are conducted without access to this ground truth. For experiment B, with 5% probability, we randomly choose some of our measurements to corrupt. These will act as outliers. We then also test with outliers. This figure shows an example of the outlier measurements, which are shown with purple crosses, while the ground truth trajectory is shown in blue for one of our test sequences. For experiment C, the only change we make from experiment B is that we no longer have outliers in our training set, but still include outliers in our test set. Now I will be presenting the results of our experiment. In experiment A, we are interested in seeing if we can use only the LiDAR localization measurements to learn our model parameters. This figure shows the estimation errors along with the three sigma covariance envelope, using our learned parameters on the test set. As a benchmark, we also learn another set of model parameters where we additionally include ground truth poses in our training.
we call this training with incomplete ground truth. This is different from our previous work, where the training method required ground truth on entire state, pose, and velocity. We call this training with complete ground truth. The main takeaway from this experiment is that while we achieve very similar errors across all training methods, the benefit is that we do not require any ground truth. Neither of the three training methods seem to outperform the others. We believe this is because our LiDAR localization measurements are quite accurate relative to ground truth. To further validate our method, we artificially add noise to our measurements. In this figure, we show how the errors in our estimates increase relative to the noise in our measurements. We plot the average translational errors in our measurements in blue and the average translational errors of our estimates in orange to get an idea of the relative scale. What we see is that even with average measurement errors of above 1.6 meters, the average error in our estimate remains below 0.5 meters. Therefore, we show we are able to learn reasonable parameters of our system, even without ground truth and quite noisy measurements. In experiments B and C, we want to validate our procedure for estimating time varying covariances using an inverse Wishart prior. To do this, we add outliers to our measurements with a 5% probability. We also compare to the case where static covariance is naively learned for all measurements. In experiment B, we also include outliers in our training set. The following table shows the resulting translational errors for each of the methods. From this, we can see that instead of simply learning a static covariance parameter for our measurements, by treating the measuring covariance as a state and estimating the parameters of the prior over covariances, we are able to handle outliers in our data much better. Recalling the previous table from experiment A, where there were no outliers, we see that our estimates are quite comparable. Experiment C is very similar to experiment B, except that now we want to see what happens if we train without any outliers but still test with outliers. This table shows that the resulting translational errors are again very high when we simply learn a static measurement covariance, but we can still achieve reasonably low errors when learning parameters of our inverse Wishart prior. Once again, we can compare this to the case when we do not have any outliers in our test set and see that our error does not increase by much. Thus from experiments B and C, we can see that incorporating the inverse Wishart prior helps to reject outliers in the test set, regardless of whether there are any outliers in the training set. While errors for the static covariance are similarly poor in both experiments, it is interesting to note the difference in the concentration of errors shown in the figure on the right. And so this is basically comparing the errors on part of the test sequence uh, for these two cases. When training without any outliers, such as in experiment C, we can see that the estimator is unable to deal with outlier measurements. The estimation error shown in orange spikes at the location of the outliers in the test set, shown by the purple crosses. In the case where we train with measurement outliers, such as in experiment B, we can see that the errors shown in blue are more spread out over the entire trajectory. Regardless of the difference, we can see that using the inverse Wishart prior is robust to both cases and still results in low translational errors. For the last experiment, we move to a post graph optimization problem with real outliers coming from false loop closures. The odometry and loop closure constraints were created from a bag of words place recognition system run on data collected for the raw seeds project. In this figure, we see the odometric trajectory in blue with the loop closures in red. Visually, we see that there are many false loop closures. We optimize the pose graph using three methods. First, just estimating the trajectory with no covariance learning. Second, our proposed framework, estimating the trajectory and learning just a static covariance for all loop closure constraints. And lastly, our proposed framework, estimating both the trajectory and measurement covariances while learning the parameters of our inverse Wishart prior. The figure on the left shows the resulting optimized trajectory. Without any covariance learning shown in yellow, the trajectory is very poor. Clearly, the false loop closures have a really negative effect on the solution. Learning a static covariance for all loop closures helps a bit more, and this is shown in green. However, we can see that our framework with the inverse Wishart prior shown in blue is the closest to the ground truth shown in red. The average trajectory error, as calculated by the Rossi's toolkit provided by the dataset authors, is shown in the table on the right. In conclusion, we have presented variational inference with parameter learning using expectation maximization. We showed that our parameter learning method does not need ground truth and is robust to noisy measurements and outliers. This is desirable because in many cases, we do not have a way of obtaining accurate ground truth of robot trajectories. The implication of our work is that we now have a framework for estimating robot parameters based solely on whatever sensors are available. We have experimentally demonstrated our method on a 36 kilometer long vehicle dataset and a post optimization problem with false loop closures. Thank you for listening.